Hi, I'm Jen Owen. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife and Large Animal Clinical Sciences, and I'm center coordinator for the Cory Marsh Ecological Research Center, which is one of 14 research centers run by Ag Bio Research at Michigan State University. Cory Marsh Ecological Research Center is a 320 acre property located in the Looking Glass watershed in Clinton County. It's near Bath, Michigan, and as the crow flies, it's about eight and a half miles from the MSU campus and is a 20 minute drive. The property itself borders the northern property boundary of Michigan DNR's Rose Lake State Wildlife Research Area. So while Cory Marsh was founded in 2018, its connection to MSU, Michigan State University, extends much further back to the 1850s. And it's because of the 1850 Federal Swamp and Overflowed Lands Act, which granted states in the Union swamp lands to be used, to be drained and used for agriculture. Of the millions of acres that were granted to Michigan, the state then granted 7,000 acres of the swamp land to the newly formed Michigan Agricultural College in 1858. Over the next 40 years, the college sold that land, except for a 200 acre parcel in the Bath Township. So MSU almost sold this rem remaining 200 acres in the 1930s, but with the encouragement of a muck soil specialist, Professor Paul Harmer, they decided to keep the land so they could further expand the muck soils research program at Ms. MSU. So it was in 1941, and with a $5,000 grant from the State Board of Agriculture, they moved the Muck Soils Research Program to what became the newly established Muck Soils Research Farm. And as this newspaper article says from 1945, this was situated 12 miles north of Lansing in the center of Quarry Marsh. Hence the name today. So for over 70 years, research was conducted at the muck farm on muck soil biology and chemistry and vegetable production in muck soils. Muck, similar to peat, has excellent water holding capacity and its depth made it ideal for growing celery and onions, carrots, potatoes, head lettuce, and more. And here are just a few images of what the muck farm and specifically the actual muck looked like. While this is our first field day as Cory Marsh Ecological Research Center, there have been many field days when it was the Muck Soils Research Farm, and I thought it would be fun to just share some of the photos from some of those field days. It was in 2018 that I discovered the existence of this property, and it was around the same time that the sale of it was being negotiated. And after visiting the site, I could see that it had potential for a different purpose, to become a center for natural resources-based research, providing opportunities for students, faculty, partners in our community to engage in ecological research conveniently located near the MSU campus. So like Paul Harmer in 1941, I pitched the idea of retaining the property and with the support of MSU Ag Bio Research and Office of Land Management, we repurposed the property to be an ecological field station. The issues with water that made it a challenge for muck soil research are ideal for studying wetland ecosystems. In fact, unused muck farms across the United States are commonly reclaimed and the wetlands restored. So the revised mission of Cory Marsh Ecological Research Center will be to initiate long-term monitoring of wetland and surround the surrounding ecosystems to better understand how they function and to conduct scientific research that informs society about better land stewardship practices and how to conserve our natural resources. The ongoing research will be the foundation for outreach and education programs. We will provide opportunities for the public to be active participants in scientific research to increase awareness and understanding of the relevance of science to society. Further, the research and outreach activities will serve as a platform for training undergraduate students in field-based research and science communication and engagement. 
So a lot has changed in the six years the property laid empty. The muck, as seen in the photo in the top left, with rows of crops, was reclaimed by the water. And note the pump house that you can see in both photos for a bit of perspective on just how much it has changed. To further show you what it looks like today, I wanted to share a drone video that was taken this spring. Please note that if you are sensitive to motion, this is a fairly fast moving video. So in addition to the muck that's now predominantly open water and cattails, there are some, and there's some small patches of forested wetlands. The most extensive habitat are the large expanses of open wet fields with monotypic stands of reed canary grass. Now reed canary grass is a non-native grass that has been planted for forage and erosion control, but it's become a problem because it has outcompeted most native species in wetlands and poses a major challenge for wetland wet prairie restoration. Further, areas that with these dense stands of reed canary grass have lower plant and insect diversity. So one of our research goals at CMERC is to better understand the relationship between reed canary grass and the health of the community, from the microbes to, in the soil to the vertebrates, such as insectivorous birds. We have the opportunity to conduct long-term studies prior to any restoration efforts and track the impact of removing, controlling, reed canary grass, and the reestablishment of native species, both on ecosystem function and health of the community. And later in this program, you're gonna hear a couple talks about projects that we've initiated to gather baseline data on the avian community. We've also been generating a nice inventory of species that are found at Quarry Marsh, primarily through citizen and community science-based efforts such as bio blitzes that we've been holding each year, iNaturalist and eBird. This is in no way the whole inventory. We're still identifying species and adding to our list. And we hope that over the years through the same efforts, we'll have a comprehensive species inventory. And through these efforts, we've also documented species of conservation concern at Quarry Marsh, including the prairie vole, which we found through small mammal trapping during one of our bio blitzes, which is listed as an endangered species in Michigan. We also have documented sightings of landing turtle, another species of concern. And we have marsh obligate species of concern, such as secretive marsh birds. And these will be the focus of a talk later in the program by Hannah Landerlin. Also most notable at the site in terms of species, particularly for bird watchers, are the abundant waterfall that use the site during spring and fall migration. Don Avers, the waterfall biologist with Michigan DNR, has been banding ducks to monitor waterfowl populations in Michigan 
and we are starting to team up with Don and doing some testing for avian influenza virus, which we'll talk about briefly in a short presentation later in the program. The Cory Marsh is also open to the public. People can go out there to enjoy the trails. We have about a mile and a half, two miles of trails out there. You can go out to bird watch. We also hold public events such as our annual bio blitz, our exploration days with Science Fest, and bird banding events, which we'll talk about later in this program. So we have a lot of dreams at Cory Marsh uh, of what this place can be what it could look like. And this past spring, the senior landscape architecture students in their environmental design course used our vision of integrating research, community engagement, and experiential learning, and created different renderings of what Cory Marsh could look like. This is just one example of how activities at Cory Marsh can enhance the undergraduate experience at MSU. One of our immediate goals, and one we're currently raising funds to support, is building trails that are ADA accessible, providing smooth surfaces and boardwalks that make the site easier to access with a wheelchair, removing a barrier for enjoying the natural resources. While the vision for Cory Marsh is very different than its past, we do want to preserve this history of this land. The people that work there, the research that was conducted, and how it reflects the history of agriculture. To that end, a group of faculty from the Department of Community Sustainability, Fisheries and Wildlife, the college, and members of the community, and with funding from the Michigan Humanities Council, are conducting an oral history project in which we are collecting the stories of the people that worked on the muck farm. We will then share these in the land's history using an interpretive trail throughout the marsh. And I want to emphasize the value of Cory Marsh for the experiential learning opportunities for undergraduate students. They can participate in active research, they can lead their own research, and be close enough to campus that they can do it throughout the year. Today, two undergraduates, Evan and Hannah, will showcase research that they independently designed and conducted this past summer. And as the title of the Virtual Field Day suggests, this program is concentrating on our migratory bird work. While there's quite a bit of research and other activities going on at Cory Marsh, today we're focusing on migratory birds. And that research and activities are conducted by the Michigan State Bird Observatory, which operates out of Cory Marsh, but does a broad range of activities on and off site, all of which you'll hear about today. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the Cory Marsh Ecological Research Center and have a better understanding of its past, its present, and its future. Thank you.